see, the first Adam came to the earth in the Garden of Eden. And unfortunately, because of disobedience, sin entered the world. And when sin entered the world, death began to reign. But then the last Adam came onto the earth. Glory to God. How many of you know who know, the, who, know who the last Adam is? Who is the last Adam? His name is Jesus. He comes on the scene and he brings with him the gift of grace, the gift of righteousness, so that we can reign in this life over sin and over death and come to that fullness that God wants for us. Hallelujah. So God wants his plan to manifest in your life, his good plans. And many times we need restoration. Now, I want to just mention this. Bible restoration is totally different from restoration as we know it. You know, Bible restoration, how many of you would agree that it's better? Okay? Regular restoration, basically you return something to a former or original state. You sort of, somebody's restoring in the world today, they restore what they have taken. So somebody steals a thousand bucks from you and they're restoring it to you. They give you a thousand bucks. And that's not bad. I mean, if somebody takes $5,000 from your account and suddenly restores $5,000, you say, praise the Lord. If somebody steals your car and returns your car in the same shape it was, you say, praise the Lord. That's worldly restoration, where something is returned in its original state. But Bible restoration is better. Can you say better? Bible restoration is a lot better. It's not just the original. It restores more. I said it restores more. You didn't hear what I said. It restores more. God's restoration is always more. That's why in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12, he says, I will restore double to you. Not the original, double. Double is the minimum for God. Double is the minimum for the kingdom. Somebody get excited. Someone gets excited. Double is the minimum. I know some of you say, oh, I just wish I had exactly what was taken. No, no, no. God says, no, no, I'm not that kind of God. I'm the God when I pour into your cup, your cup runneth over. He restores double for your trouble. You see, Bible restoration is, is different. Let's look at the example of Job. Job, man, the example of Job is, is quite an example. Job was a rich and a great guy. And the Bible says that he, he really pleased the Lord in a lot of things he was doing. God was proud of him. God was, he was, he was, he was boasting about Job in the heavenlies, you know. And then Job was rich. He had seven sons and three daughters. Job had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen. Now, that's a lot. I mean, if you think about it, you, you, you know, you think about camel, transportation. So, you can imagine all the transportation tracks, tra tracks he had. You know, he had all, the, he was wealthy. He was, he was great in the land. He had his health, you know, he had status and all of that. He goes on and gives us specific numbers. And when the Bible gives specific numbers, look at it carefully. His Bible says he had 500 female donkeys. He had a very large household. Everything was going great. And then Job went through a trial. And of course, the enemy, well, I'm not going to go through the whole story, but the enemy got involved in this. And in one day, Job lost all his sheep, 7,000. He lost all his camel, 3,000. He lost all his yoke of oxen, 500. 500 female donkeys, all lost. And he lost his seven sons and his three daughters. And then he lost his health. That was horrible. That was a horrible trial. A horrible trial. I don't want anybody to go through that. But he went through that. But still, God restored double to Job. Because when he restores, he restores double, minimum. Bible says in Job chapter 42, verse 10, the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. I'll come back to that in a minute. It says, indeed, the Lord gave Job twice or double as much as he had before. Then the Bible records specifically what God restored. In verse 12, it says, the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginnings, for he had 14,000 sheep before he had 7,000. He said he had 6,000 camels before he had 3,000. He said he had 1,000 yoke of oxen before he had 500. And he goes on and he says he had 14,000 sheep. One, oh, sorry, 1,000 female donkeys. Glory to God. He also had seven sons and three daughters. Now, this is interesting. Notice what it says here because they had been killed, right? It goes on, it says he had seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Jemima, the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Karen Hapak. In all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. In other words, they were even more glorious. 
There was something about them. And then he goes on and says, after this, Job um, and says that in all the land, and, and, says, and their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers, which was not something usual at the time. But so it was something better. Better. Glory to God. You see, God always loves to restore more because that's the nature of God. He's a God that restores. Under the law of Moses, it's the same idea. You see that the minimum is double. Exodus 22, 4. If someone steals an ox or a donkey or a sheep and it is found in the thief's possession. In other words, the thief has been discovered. And the ox and the oxen are, are found in his possession. The Bible says the thief must pay double the value of the stolen animal. In other words, you don't just get back what you, you, you find in his possession. He has to pay double. That's the heart of God. You go on in Exodus chapter 22. It says, if someone steals an ox or sheep and then kills or sells it, the thief must pay five oxen for each oxen stolen and four sheep for each sheep stolen. Now it has gone up to five. It has gone up to four. But the minimum is what? Double. In other words, somebody still steals and now they find the person because they, and they find the thief and the thief has stolen it, has um, sold it or killed it. That's different from it being in the thief's possession. He's saying you have to pay more. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Proverbs shows that there's even a sevenfold restoration. Proverbs chapter 6.30 says, People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he's starving. Yet, when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. He may have given up all the substance of his, of his house. He may have to give up all the substance of his house. In other words, you and I, we can actually claim a sevenfold restoration from the devil. But the minimum is what? Double. The minimum is double, but you have scriptural basis to claim a sevenfold restoration. You can demand that from the enemy. But folks, that's all Old Testament. The New Testament it's better. <laughs> I don't think you guys are hearing what I'm saying. I said the New Testament is better. You know, Jesus reveals that there's a hundredfold return. A hundredfold return. You know, Bible tells us in Hebrews 8, 6 that we are, have a better covenant with the better promises. And Jesus says in Mark chapter 10, verse 29 to 30, this was Jesus, the encounter Jesus had with a rich, a rich person who came and says, how can I enter the kingdom of heaven? And then he says, I've kept all the commandments. But the real command, the real problem with this guy is that his money was his idol. Okay? That was his problem. So when Jesus said, you've done everything, but, but go and sell all that you have and come follow me, the Bible says the rich man left sorrowful. The money had him. The money was his God. So really, even though he thought he was keeping the Ten Commandments, he had broken the first. Don't have any other God but me. So in this discourse, the disciples are talking to Jesus, the man who can enter the kingdom of heaven, you know, because they, in that time they knew that as God blessed people, that was a sign of, of, of a good relationship in a sense. And Jesus says, with man it's impossible, but not with God. So as they are going on in this conversation, Peter comes and he says in verse 29 of Mark chapter 10, he says, the Bible says, Peter began to say to him, see, we have left all and followed you. This is voluntarily. He says, we have left all. And followed you. And then 29 says, So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. For my sake and the gospels. Then verse 30 says, Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. But here we see that there's a possibility of even a hundredfold return. Glory to God. What I'm trying to show you today is the fact that God has his heart to restore. That's what I'm trying to show you. He's a God that wants to restore to you the thing the enemy has stolen. He's a God that wants to restore to you the things that have, have been damaged and, and ruined in your life. You know, he wants to restore lost dreams and, and lost hopes and stuff like that. He wants to restore to you. That's what he wants. He's a God that wants to restore. But you know what? Even though God that wants to restore, you have to want restoration. It's not automatic. It's like God wants to save, but you have to want salvation. 
It's not automatic. God wants to heal, but you have to want healing and ask for healing and believe for healing. It's not automatic. In the same way, God wants to restore, but He wants us to desire restoration. Wants us to desire restoration. Sometimes people are in a bad place. They're in a bad marriage, or they're in a broken marriage, or they're in a bad situation with their finances and, and stuff like that. It's a de desperate situation, and yet they don't cry out to God for help. They don't ask for restoration. Or they don't want to find out what God's way is, what God's will is, what God's instructions are to get that restoration. In Isaiah chapter 42, we see a perfect example here. The Bible says in verse 21, The Lord is well pleased for His righteousness' sake. He will exalt the Lord and make it honorable. And then verse 22 says, But this is a people robbed and plundered. All of them are snared in holes, and they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey. That's a bad situation, right? That is a terrible situation. But it says, they are prey, and no one delivers. It says, for plunder, and no one says, restore. No one is saying, restore. No one is saying, restore. God says, no one is saying it, even though they are in a terrible situation. No one says, restore. You got to say it. You got to want it. You got to believe it. Now, I know what some of you are saying. Oh, well, you don't know my situation and stuff like that. Hold on a minute. I'm not done. Amen? God wants us to desire restoration. He wants us to ask for restoration. He wants us to declare restoration. 2 Corinthians 13, 11, part of it says, strive for full restoration. You got to want it. You got to desire it. You got to say, no, not anymore. I want it back. That's what the good word translation puts. It says, give it back. That's what it says for restore. You have to have that attitude to say, no, 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 no. I want it back. Now, yes, sometimes your situation is terrible and it's difficult, but that's why we have the promises of God. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 32, 17, he says, Ah, oh, Lord God, you've made the heavens and the earth by your outstretched arm and your great power. And he says, nothing is too difficult for you. So no matter what your situation is, it may be difficult, it may be dire, God says to you today, nothing is too difficult for Him. Nothing is too difficult for Him. Nothing is too difficult for Him. You may say, oh, no, 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 it seems impossible. Yes, it's impossible with man. But the, Bible, the angel Gabriel said to Mary that what is impossible with man is possible with God. It is possible. With God. In an instant, it can happen. God can make the bitter waters sweet in an instant. God can part the Red Seas in an instant. God can cause water to come out of a rock in an instant. Your healing can come in an instant. Are you hearing me this morning? God wants you to know that what is impossible with man is possible with him. For with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing means your situation is not impossible with God. It is not impossible with God. But you have to desire it. You have to desire it. Now, there's so many conditions for restoration. I want to give you just two. Number one, many times when we've restored it, we, we've kind of, we've been damaged in our emotions and, and stuff like that. And I believe that is one area the Lord wants you to touch on. I'm just closing now. One area the Lord wants me to touch on. Sometimes we are hurt because we've been abused. We are hurt because we've been unjustly treated. We are hurt. We are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are in a bad place in our emotions. But the important thing you have to remember is that you have to walk in love. And I'm going to ask you to do something difficult, but it's really critical. Restoration begins when you release the people that have offended you. Restoration begins when you release the people that have hurt you. And I'm telling you, it's not easy to do. And sometimes you have to do it. You do it by faith. Even though the hurt is there, you say, Lord, I release them by faith right now in the name of Jesus. When you look at the book of Job, Job had three friends that initially, when they saw his, tra his tragedy, you know, he had lost everything in an instance, his, all the cattle and all the sheep and everything like that. And, 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 and in a, just in a moment, everything was gone. You know, his children died. Ten of them, they died. Just one day, he heard one bad news after the other. The Bible says he put on sackcloth and ashes. And then, to make matters worse, he had all these boils over him. 
His wife said, curse God and die. That's not a very good wife. But that's what she said, curse God and die. And anyway, Job's friends came and initially they started, you know, kind of trying to comfort him and encourage him. And then they looked at all of this and they began to think, no, you must have done something wrong. And they kept on going on and on and, and you know, giving him different ideas and stuff like that. And, 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 and basically they were all in left field. They were wrong. And they kept on and on. And so now Job is saying, no, I haven't done anything wrong. And the, the conversation keeps going on and on. And they began to point the finger at Job, point the finger at Job, point the finger at Job. And he could have been offended. But when God begins to talk to Job and begins to explain things to Job, one of the things God says to Job is that you got to pray for your friends. And then I will restore. He doesn't tell him that pray for them and then I will restore. He says pray for them. And the Bible says then God restore. Let's look at that briefly in Job chapter 42. Verse 10. I don't think I have it down there, but it's Job 42.10. It says, the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. I wonder what would have happened if Job had not prayed for his friends. The Bible tells us in the New Testament, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. You got to release. You got to release. You got to forgive. You've got to ask God for the strength to forgive, to release these people. You've got to do that. And then the, next, the other thing I want to say is that you have to put it in your mouth. You have to believe in your heart that it's possible with God. And then you have to vocalize it, declare it. The Bible says in Job twenty two twenty eight, you will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. You have to declare it. You have to say it. You have to say out loud, I want this restoration. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is a God that restores. He loves to restore. He wants to restore. His will is to restore. And he's saying this to you, that look, I will give you double. One version says in Zechariah 9, 12, double for your trouble. Doesn't matter what it is you've lost. He says, I will restore. I will restore. I'm the one that has come to give you life to the full and to, its, to abundance. I will restore your soul. I'll give back to you the joy of my salvation. If only you are willing to say, Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation, which was what the psalmist said. The psalmist said, Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Some of you walked with the Lord for a while, but the joy is gone. And because the joy is gone, you, 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 you're, you're a little lukewarm concerning the things of God. Ask God to restore to you the joy of his salvation. Ask God to give you, give, give you that passion for his word, that passion for the things of God once again. Ask him, and he will restore. He will restore double to you. Some of you, you have bad relationships or the relationships that are totally broken. Marriages are, you know, situations that are so bad, God is willing to restore. Sometimes a divorce has happened, but you know what? When God restores marriage to you, even when there's a divorce, that may be better. Just like the children of, of, uh, of Job who were, were born to him after his restoration. The Bible says his, his daughters were even more beautiful. So even when there has been a death, if you cry out for restoration because you want that restoration... God will restore better. Hallelujah. What is it that you need restoration for this morning? What is it that you want to cry out to God for? He will restore. Is that dream broken? Is that dream that you know God placed in your heart, is it suddenly sort of dying? He will restore to you that dream. But you have to say, no, 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 no. I want it back. You have to say, restore. Restore. You have to say that I can't do that for you. I can encourage you. I can pray for you. But you have to say, restore. Oh, you may have been in a place of shame. Something has happened over the past several years. And, and, and right now, you, you can't look up. You look down because of the shame. Maybe it's something that you did. Something or other. But God says, I want to restore double honor for your shame. Will you accept that this morning? I said, will you accept that this morning? 